Hi everybody, so I get asked this quite a lot actually and I have done it in previous videos but probably never a video by itself and that is how do you make use of the devices you're making? Because of course we make lots of wind turbines, lots of generators and my tendency is just to leave it with a couple of wires sticking out there and say okay wire it up and the reason I do that is because the okay wire it up bit it's always the same. It doesn't actually matter if you've got some really tiny, tiny little project you're doing or some really big project. The process is always the same. Now, all electromagnetic generators, that is generators where you waggle a magnet field around a coil, produce AC. You have to do something with that. And in order to do something with that, the very first stage that you do is rectify it. Now, some DC generators use brushes to pseudo-rectify, but it's never really very good. What you really need to do is stick a rectifier on those two wires coming out. Now, rectifiers can be bought as a package, and then bought usually at, oh, I don't know, less than a penny per unit. And use a diode in a diamond arrangement like this and wire them that way and you will get some DC out. Now that DC won't be perfect, it'll still be bouncing around as DC and that's called ripple and you might want to take that out in which case you strap a capacitor in there but let's leave it for a second and just say the first thing we do is rectify it. The very next thing we do is stabilise the voltage because it's extremely rare for you to want a voltage that rises up and down like crazy. What you really want is something nice and level so that you can feed it into a battery or feed it directly into your phone or feed it directly into some kind of application. And for that, you need a nice stable voltage regulator. Voltage regulators are stunningly cheap. I mean, there's five of them in this package and it costs $6.99 and there it is. It's a little circuit board that's just ridiculously cheap to buy. So you can make this from discrete components if you want to, but to be honest, I just think it's a waste of time and that you just get something like this. Now, this is based on the popular chip, the LM2596S. It's a voltage regulation chip. It will take 3 amps. On the input, it'll take something like, oh, between 3 and 40 volts coming in. And that's 3 and 40 volts varying wildly. On the output, it will output something like 1.5 to 3.5 volts. And you can set that to be a voltage between those ranges that you want. Now, 3 amps is a considerable amount of power. It's, it's more than you're going to use for phone charging, for example. It's more than you're going to use for an awful lot of applications. So it's a very popular little board that's relatively easy to buy and relatively cheap. And I'm quite sure that in the comments, people will put their favourite boards and the reasons why it's their favourite and this is no good because X, Y and Z. And that's great. It's nice to hear what other people's favourites are. I choose this because it's basically dirt cheap, really easy to use and represents the same whatever. Whatever you do, you take those two wires and you rectify them. Once you've rectified them, you stabilize the voltage with something like this. And something like this is stunningly easy to use. So to help me do this, I've got a power supply set at ton 10 volts and I've got a multimeter that's reading the DC voltage. Because you're going to muck around with these, you should already have a power supply and a multimeter. If you don't, you probably need to get one. I've also got a very tiny screwdriver and I've connected this up. And I know which is in and out because it tells me which is in and out. And I know which is plus and minus because it says plus and minus. So you connect the out to your voltmeter so you can read the out. And you connect your in to your power supply so you can give it the voltage that you want to give it. And this voltage will vary in your actual application, but when you're doing the setting, you do the setting by using a stable supply. Okay, so it's reading 9.46, and that's because of the setting of uh, the factory. Now we're going to twiddle this knob on the top. There's a little brass screw right there, you pop a little screwdriver in and give that a turn and watch the voltage. So it's clockwise to increase the voltage setting and anti-clockwise to decrease it and that is the voltage out. So the voltage out will be stabilised at the setting you just put. And it doesn't matter if this changes its voltage, so let's say 15 volts. 
and we still get 5 volt sound. So that's how easy something like that is to use. And all we do is we solder it in, and of course it's plus to plus, minus to minus. So on your rectifier you'll have a plus out, and that goes to the plus in on the voltage regulator. On your rectifier you'll have a minus out, and that goes to the minus in on your voltage regulator. Then your plus out and minus out will be the bits that you're going to take to whatever application you want, like a battery charger, a phone charger, something like that. So the reason I'm going through this, well, I'm actually making a change to that singer machine so that it can become powerful enough to charge a phone. And it doesn't matter whether it's something like this, or if it's a, a wind turbine, or if it's a wave machine, or if it's a pedal bicycle, it doesn't matter. The two wires that come out go through a rectifier, then a voltage regulator, and after that, well, you can just use them straight away if you want. If you could get the two wires into your phone, you could just stick the two wires into your phone. It's probably better you put a plug on the end of it, but you could just stick them straight in there. Or you can connect them straight up to a battery and then stick that battery into your phone. Whatever it is you want to do, the same process is done. And I've been asked, like I say, a number of times, so I thought I would dedicate a video to it. Meanwhile, we'll finish our phone charger from our Singer sewing machine mechanism. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope it was helpful. Thank you very much for watching, and please do remember to like and subscribe.